Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And as you have seen the title of the video, it's about top 10 interview questions about Kubernetes. So I've been actually giving a lot of interviews in last six months or eight months or so, right? And, and I have noticed a pattern that companies are actually focusing a lot on Kubernetes side of uh, knowledge. So they expect a person to know certain things about Kubernetes, right? And based on that, I mean, I've, I've just, I take down the notes of the, the kind of questions they ask, right? And based on that, I've just put up top 10 most frequent questions that have been, uh, have been asked by various companies. And, and this is based completely on my personal experience. And this is not in any order. Uh, it's not about it's not about which qu question is important and which is not. It's it's just a collection of questions which you would frequently see companies asking, right? So let's get started. It will be a short video. So the first question is the function of etcd in Kubernetes. So you know that Kubernetes has an etcd cluster, right? Which actually stores the the state of all your resources which you create in Kubernetes. So they want to know, I mean, why do you use etcd and how you use etcd, whether you want to run it as a pod or a, basically a separate cluster, right? Uh, next question, which is most frequently, uh, this is an important one and a tough one, uh, what are admission controllers? So, I mean, if you don't know what admission controllers are, please go and read the Kubernetes documentation. It is basically a piece of code which you, I mean, you can, which you write, basically you can write your custom admission controllers or you can use existing one like RBAC and stuff like that. So it's a piece of controller which basically intercepts your request before it reaches the API API controller, API, sorry, the Kubernetes API, right? So yeah, that's what admission controllers are. I mean, they do a lot of stuff. You just have to go and read the documentation. Next is what is pod, pod affinity, node affinity, and pod anti-affinity. So this is very confusing, especially the pod anti-affinity part, right? So this is this is actually very confusing. I had to read this like several times just to be sure what I'm talking about, whether I'm talking about node affinity. So this is basically related to your scheduling, where you want to schedule your pods or where you don't want to schedule your pods, right? So this is another important question you should see. Again, another important question. Uh, I feel like all the questions are important. So stateful set and daemon set. So people, I mean, most of the people are actually familiar with daemon sets, but stateful sets are actually a little confusing. So you, I mean, you can read the Kubernetes documentation about stateful set because they are mostly used to run stateful applications. So each pod basically running in a stateful set has, a, has its own PVC, right? It's uh, persistent volume claims. Uh, position volume and stuff like that so they basically maintain their state and even i mean if i think a pod in a stateful set when it goes down the same pod comes up with same dns and same name which is not the case with your daemon set or your deployments right daemon sets are basically i think they make sure that a pod run on each of your node right something like a q proxy so you want to run q proxy on all your nodes Different types of, so this is an easy one. So different types of services in Kubernetes. I mean, this is, I think, most basic question and this has been asked like most number of time. So they will ask you to explain the different type of services like cluster IP, node port, uh, load balancer type, right? And how they are different. And some questions around that as well. Next question is liveliness and readiness. I, I think I only have been asked this like couple of times because People actually don't know about these uh, about these readiness and uh, liveliness pod themselves. So, what exactly is the function uh, of a liveliness pod or a readiness pod? So, you can read the read about these. A liveliness pod is basically uh, it's a mechanism used by Kubelet to know when to restart a pod, right? And readiness pod. So, I think readiness pod you uh, probe basically you create when you don't want to send the traffic to a pod immediately, right? So you want that pod to be ready before you send the traffic to your application, right? So that's what readiness pod does, uh, probe does. 
a uh, different between replication controller and replica set so this is another very common question so replication replication controller is an older way of replication i believe and replica set is what you have re i mean what the recent thing is and you can read about the difference how how they are different i'm not going to tell you that but it, it's a very minor difference so they do the same kind of stuff it's just a little minor difference so if you know about that if you learn about that please put that in the comments What are network policies? So this is another important question related to Kubernetes securities, right? So why do you use network policies basically uh, to, I mean, control the traffic between multiple pods or different pods basically because pod to pod communication is open by default. So you don't have any restriction. So you use network policies to control that. Persistent volume uh, and how does pod uses it? So they would want to know what a persistent volume and how you actually mount a persistent volume on a pod, right? So this is another uncommon question. Not many companies ask these, but I have been asked like, I think one time this, yeah. So I thought I just put that. And the final question is pod to pod communication. So this has been asked to me like uh, quite a number of times. Uh, they want to know how a pod to pod communication works. And this is actually the most complex question to explain because, I mean, you know the things, you know how it, it happens, but explaining it to the interviewer is actually, I mean, it's where it gets tricky. Another question related to something similar is pod to service communication, right? So that's another uh, question which, which you ask. But if you read about port to port communication, you should also read about port to service communication, how service communication happens. So yeah, that's all I have. Uh, that's pretty much uh, I wanted to share. It's a short video I told you. So yeah, that's, I hope you like the video. I hope you get some help with your interviews when you go ahead, right? And yeah, I hope you like the video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.